What's up you guys, Ray here. I um, wanted to come talk to you guys today just about uh, how we're managing our finances in our store, our monthly sales specifically, and what we actually um, do in profit for the store. Um, this channel has taken a turn. I wanted to take it on a more financial side of things um, because I do know that um, there's a lot of people out there trying to build businesses, especially retail stores, and they want to see it firsthand. So that's exactly where we're taking this channel. Um, we're going to do what, one video a week in the store and one video um, on our day off, more on the financial side of things on the day off, and the store is kind of going to be more of a business uh, side of things. So um, basically coming at you today with our monthly sales for the day, our monthly sales for the day, monthly sales and what brings us to our number, how much we actually take home, what we actually throw away, what we're trying to improve, and where we need to be at to keep this business um, as profitable as it can be. All right, let's get right into it, guys. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't down below. Um, we are bringing a lot of new content this year based around our grocery store, owning one, and the stresses it comes with owning a small business. All right, thanks again. Before this video starts guys, I wanted you guys to comment down below on the exact percentage that I totaled throughout the categories. I know I did the math wrong, I was doing this video really quick, um, so the categories will equal up to more than 100 I think. Um, if you figure out that percentage, please comment that down below. Um, yeah, I was doing this in between customers so I was like very jumpy and excited like I am now. So yeah, let's get, to, let's get into this one, yeah. I need another pepper. On a separate note, yes, um, there is me, the owner. Felicia's considered an employee. She's paid hourly. That's the best way our accountant told us to do things. We have one other employee um, who's very part-time. Let's just say that. Um, I don't believe in having people here unless it's busy. And if I'm here, you know, this place is full and then there only needs to be one person at the front. So our labor costs are very low. So that helps build... Um, our ability to buy more inventory and keep our costs down. Hey guys, welcome to our latest video. Um, I know Ray had touched upon what we're going to be talking about today, so our monthly sales. Um, this actually varies from month to month, month, to month and um, depending on the season as well. So when I say, oh this is close, um, when I say that certain seasons affect um, monthly sales, um, it's very true. Um, you notice that in the fall and winter, a lot of people tend to go towards the comfort food, um, such as like potatoes, um, you know, chips, dessert wise, um, you know, pierogies, things like that. Um, just something easy to cook and um, I don't know I don't know how to explain it but you definitely see a lot of those things selling more in the fall and winter see a lot of like carrots and celery and all those things for soups um, soup broths those types of things um, just because it's cold outside so a lot of people want something that's gonna warm them up and something that is just like comfort apples always seem to sell but they sell a lot more um, in the fall um, just because it's apple season a lot of people do go apple picking but they'll most likely only do that once in the season so these guys tend to sell a lot we are working hard here we got the resident chef get over here say hi you're on the chef is here shy Felicia's the wannabe. She's the cashier. And I am the face of the business. You're everything. Okay? Getting back to the regular programming. And one more thing, guys. Uh, the percentages do vary. Like one month, uh, dairy might be down, produce might be up. The other month, you know, uh, dry goods might be up and produce will be up and dairy will be at the very bottom. They do fluctuate a little bit. These numbers are averages throughout the year that we found. So if my percentages don't match up at the end of this video, 
um, yeah, that's just because they vary and I'm kind of going with the flow of my averages over the year. You'll find that in your retail store or your business in general. Things will fluctuate. One thing will sell like crazy one week. The next week it will not uh, move at all. You can't give it away for free. In the winter, um, oranges tend to be a big seller um, just because that's the season that a lot of people tend to get sick. Um, so a lot of people eat them just to like boost their vitamin C intake and they're very good but red is always a seller especially from September to June um, just because a lot of people use it for breakfast before they go to work um, their lunches and also their children's lunches to make sandwiches um, so this is like a great seller from September to June drinks and meals I'm talking like chicken wraps, potato salads, soups, um, kombuchas, coconut waters. That pretty much for the summer um, does about 20% of our... Mm, I gotta make sure this all makes sense at the end. I would say about 15% of our total monthly sales. That is a... Meals are gonna be 25% margins. Drinks are at 50% margins. Not bad. A little bit of little waste so very good drinks can last you forever well if you're not selling your drinks fast enough before they go flat well your store is just not busy enough in general to be honest and you have a bigger problem than waste on drinks okay so dairy makes up about 10 to 15 percent of our monthly sales um, there can be a lot of waste depending on certain items um, we find that it sells more in the fall and winter than it does in the summer. You have to be decently busy in order to sell dairy, and I only say this because there can be a lot of waste. Um, for us, it's more so milk and the expiry dates, but we normally take some home anyways um, for coffee and protein shakes and things like that, so we don't really have too much waste on it, but sometimes there can be, especially in the summer. The thing about some items is that their shelf lives are a bit longer. What? Nothing. I'm talking Look, about guys, dairy. Listen, we're trying to build this business, okay? You're going to see this business go from zero to a hundred. How many years? I say by next year it'll be... Even busier? Yeah. We're We've doing, gotten busier. We're doing about a hundred customers a day on average. If not a little bit more. On the weekends we do more. So please like this channel. I uh, like this video. And subscribe to this channel to see that and support this business. Because this YouTube channel is part of this business. Oh, yeah, sorry. Where were we at? Alright, um, our store started off as just a produce store. Um, we learned that with the waste and that the people were coming in anyway, so why wouldn't we carry other things that they were going to buy, you know, example, bread, honey, um, grab-and-go lunches. If they're already here, why should I limit this store to just being a produce shop? Um, nevertheless, at this point in time, produce does pretty much do 35 to 40 percent of our sales per month. I'm hoping these percentages add up to 100 at the end of this video because it's going to be really embarrassing if they don't um, but I should have written this stuff down when I was making before I made this video so produce 35 to 40 percent of our monthly sales this one is the toughest one ever because it's so perishable if there's one dent on things we have to either figure out what we're doing with it um, repurposing it chopping it up putting it in one of our grab-and-go lunches making salsa out of tomatoes making guacamole out of avocados. It all has to keep going full circle. You don't want to throw away too much of your profits. You will have to throw away some, no matter what. And I think our last section that will include a lot of our inventory that we have to sit on for a long time, they take up pretty much 50% of our inventory that we have to sit on. The beautiful thing about dry goods, I include my cans, chips, salt, uh, jarred salsas, you know, any sauces, pastas, jarred pickles, olives, all that stuff I'm including in dry goods because this is stuff that I just put on the shelves, 
wait for it to sell, wait to get my money back. It does take a lot longer to get my money back from dry goods than fresh produce or dairy or baked goods um, because well, just the nature of dry goods. People don't get excited, they don't need them as much. They only pick them up once in a while. When they run out, they throw them in their fridge and, and then when they run out, they'll get more. The trick is to find the perfect balance of amount of dry goods that will make your store look full, that will still turn over at the right amount so you're not sitting on crushing inventory that you can't buy things you need, like your fresh produce, your dairy, things that actually turn quicker than the dry goods. A full store will bring people back in, but you do not want to sit on inventory that does not sell because that's your money tied up and you're not getting that back until it sells. It looks great, yeah, it looks full, but it means nothing unless it turns over. And last but not least, 15%, I would say, of our monthly sales are keto and vegan-based items. Um, I'm really hoping that this these percentages add up to 100. Please bear with me if they don't. Um, this video was made on the fly in between customers and uh, I just, as soon as someone jumps out, I'll pick up the camera and keep talking. So yeah, 15%. Uh, margins on this kind of stuff, I would say 20%. No waste because it turns over well um, and it sells very well, but the margins are 20%. Last but certainly not least a miscellaneous section another five to ten percent i really feel like i went over a hundred percent on this um i'm gonna add coffee espressos cappuccinos baked goods and all of our impulse items up front like chocolate bars little baby nutella jars lollipops for the kids trail mixes up front that stuff um sells very well when people are waiting in line Five to, ten, five to ten percent of our monthly sales comes from all of that and people just love that option that they can grab a coffee on their way out or an espresso while they walk around so that is pretty much everything yeah okay so everything added together at the end of the month our produce dry goods bakery one second your dad's calling. So. <laughs> One second. Should I answer this? Yeah. So, you want me to leave that in? Because I will. Um, My dad called. Total monthly sales on average for our first year 30000 a month. Not bad, not great, but livable. We're not going out of business. We're not going to get rich at that level. I mean, I don't expect to get rich in a small business. I would like to be, you know, comfortable where I don't have to work. 100, 100 hours a week or something. It's running smoothly, things are getting easier. We have a lot more uh, product. We're building our customer base. When we're building our regulars, it's like building subscribers on this channel. So picture you subscribing to this channel and, and you know watching two of my videos a month. Our regulars, they might come in once a week, once every two weeks, once every three weeks. These are regular people that become literally walking cash. I know it looks I know it sounds bad to think of them like that, but that's the people that will actually turn your inventory over. I'd say 20% of the customers that we have now buy 80% of our inventory. The other ones are just random people walking about, first timers that just need something quick. So, yeah. Anyways, if you're thinking of getting into a retail store business, please, please don't sign a 10 year lease. Everything is negotiable. Sign a one, two year lease tops. Make sure the rent is cheap. I'm gonna get all into this in another video. I'll tell you my full experience. Um, if you wanna know that, please subscribe down below and uh, we will keep going. So, I hope you got some value from this video. Um, our monthly sales, 30,000 a year. That does fluctuate. January is lower, December is much higher for obvious reasons. 30,000 a year? 30,000 a month. 